we're at the point in the semester now where we're going to begin writing the results section of our capstone papers. And I wanted to, to talk to you a little bit about how to approach writing a results section for a research paper. We'll, give, we'll go over some of the basics and what you want to accomplish within the section of the paper. Just to begin, in terms of what a results section is, the results section of your paper is where you report the findings of your study, and this is based on the analysis that you conducted of your data, whether that's survey data or qualitative interviews or an analysis of social media. What you want to do is convey the key findings from your analysis to the reader, and this is accomplished through both text as well as through tables and figures that you create to um, accompany the narrative that you write in the in this section. So basically you want to report the key findings from your project to the reader. The results section of a capstone paper, a research paper, accomplishes a few things. First, you you very eloquently in the introduction and the literature review establish the context for your research. You've identified research questions the results section really helps to provide an answer to these research questions that you posed in the introduction. The results, as we mentioned, provide an explanation of the key findings from your analysis. So you might not present every finding from your analysis. You, you might want to sort of focus on the, the key findings, the ones that really shed light on the questions that you were attempting to answer uh, through your project. A results section also usually includes supporting data and information in the format of tables and figures. So a results section is not, you don't want to necessarily present the reader with raw statistical output or the transcripts of your interviews, but you want to select, um, you want to provide a um, a formatted version of the results, kind of, you, you want to remove any extraneous information and provide summary level of information or maybe extra key quotes from your interviews that illustrate certain concepts or themes. So this supporting your data and information is usually presented in the format of tables or figures, or even sometimes you could have little quote boxes if you're presenting qualitative data. A results section usually includes uh, some type of supporting data and information to accompany the text. There are a few ways to organize your results section. Uh, what, one way that I might suggest going about it is to begin by briefly kind of stating your research question again. You, you've done this in the introduction, um, but you might want to just provide an, a little bit of a context for the reader about what you sought out to do, what you're investigating. Uh, briefly restate the research question, the problem that you're investigating, so that the, the reader uh, knows a little bit about what to expect in the text that follows. What you really want to do within the results is tell a story, and another word for a story is a, a narrative. Uh, you want your results section in some ways to be a narrative that walks the reader through your findings um, in a systematic way and in a way that provides validity and establishes the reliability of your findings. You want to also structure your results section in ways that make sense and relates to your research question. So think about what might be the way to organize your results section that makes sense in terms of answering your research question? Should you talk about certain topics first as, as context? Um, think, about, think about organizing your results question, uh, section in a way that um, tells a story in response to your research question, that answers the research question. Also really important, um, is to use non-textual elements to support um, your explanation of the findings. So within the results, you will write text to describe the key findings from your analysis. But you also want to include tables and figures to support those um, that text. The tables and figures often are the backbone of your results section. Um, I often, when I'm writing a research paper, I will a lot of times I'll pre prepare the tables and figures first and almost write around those tables and figures because they are the maybe the key summary of your findings 
and the non -text, these non textual elements um, provide like a, a framework around which you can write. Lastly, but definitely not the least important, is to be systematic and make sure that you cover all aspects of your findings that relate to your research question. Be, be selective. Um, a lot of times researchers have many more findings than they choose to report in their study. And you need to be selective about what you're um, presenting to the reader. Um, a lot of times people will do exploratory data analysis at the very beginning of a research project where they, they sort of just try to get the lay of the land, they turn over every stone, and they, they might have a lot of findings that don't maybe don't really clearly relate to the research sec, uh, results, the key research questions. And so you might not present those in the results section. They might just be for your own information. Um, and so you really want your results section to focus on answering the research question and providing key information in support of that research question. There are a few things that you want to avoid when writing a results section. First, don't confuse results with interpretation. Um, what you do not want to do, you want to use the results section to describe the findings from your data analysis. You want to report um, the process of your um, what you found from your analysis, whether that's a content analysis or a survey analysis. You want to report the findings from the analysis. You don't so much want to interpret what those findings mean because the interpretation of the study findings, what it all means, that belongs in the next section that we'll tackle, which is the discussion section of the paper, in which you summarize the overarching findings, kind of provide additional context and how they relate to the literature. That is not something that you want to include in the results section. That will go into the discussion section, which we'll tackle when, once we finish this results section. Something else that you want to avoid with the results section, you want to avoid presenting any raw data in your results. Um, you, you don't want to include full interview transcripts. Um, you, you might include um, your interview transcripts in the appendix of your paper, uh, and you will, you will do that if you're doing qualitative interviews. Um, you don't want to maybe present a, a full data table, like a data set um, on a page. Uh, you don't, those are raw data. You also don't want to present what's called like raw statistical output when you run commands in a stats program like R or SPSS or Stata. The, the program will sort of present the raw statistical output on the screen and you don't just want to copy that into your paper, but rather you want to format those, those results um, in, a, in more of a tabular format in a way that uh, removes any extraneous information that's not necessary to report. So do not present raw data in your results. Um, for qualitative interviews, you might want to present key selected quotes that illustrate your findings. Um, or for quantitative data, you might have percentages and means um, and formatted in tables, removing any extraneous data that uh, or statistical information that's not key to um, that the reader doesn't necessarily need to interpret your findings. The other thing, uh, the key with scientific writing that makes it distinct from uh, journalistic forms of writing is scientists really aim to avoid vague and nonspecific phrases. Um, so you, you don't want to use phrases like appear to be greater than or um, a, um, you know, roughly, you know, or something that dom demonstrates promising trends that, or you want to be very specific. Um, try to be as specific as you can with your writing. Um, this is often challenging for people who are first uh, beginning to write a research paper. Um, so a key is really avoiding vague Try to make your writing as specific as possible and stick close to the data. You can never really go wrong if you're really focusing on describing the results of your data analysis in a clear way that gets across the main findings to the reader. So how, how can you really succeed um, within this assignment of the capstone project writing results section? Uh, what, what I'm going to be looking for, the, 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 most, the best well-written results section 
provide a really clear and systematic description of the key findings that relate to the research question. They include tables and figures to support the interpretation of those findings, and they also um, include supporting materials. Um, so you might attach the interview transcripts in a, an appendix section. You don't want to present them in the results, um, but you you um, you might have them attached to the results section as appendix materials. Um, where people might uh, kind of not quite measure up in terms of uh, writing this section of the paper. Sometimes people will describe their findings, but maybe the, the section jumps around and there's not a clear narrative. The interpretation of the findings is not as clear. I really want you to uh, think about how to do, tell a story, um, to walk, walk the reader through um, the findings from your analysis as it relates to the research question. Um, you don't want you want to sort of tell a clear story and also you want to interpret the findings uh, clearly sometimes um, a result section might have too limited a description or too too long of a description sometimes there might be extraneous data and results that don't quite relate to the question sometimes people have typographical errors it's not clearly formatted um, and you definitely want to avoid providing like a limited or incomplete description of your findings um, it, you but the but you want to avoid uh, not including any tables or figures and um, and also you want to be careful not to focus too much on interpretation what the findings mean in the results section you really want to focus on reporting the results of your data analysis what you found and stick if you if you stick to what you found uh, within each step of your data analysis it's it's not difficult to go wrong there if you're organizing it in a way that um, presents a clear narrative to the reader.